So in this video, we're going to look at some of the basic functionality and use of Colab notebooks. And we're also going to see how we can work back and forth between Colab and Jupyter, because ultimately the notebooks are, are exactly the same format. They may look slightly different in the two different platforms, um, but, but they're underneath they're exactly the same. You don't have to work back and forth between Jupyter and Colab. Uh, I just want to show this in, in case you, you do want to. So we're in Google Drive here. Uh, if I want to create a new blank um, Colab notebook, I can right click, go to more, oh, more, and go down to Google Collaboratory. And that should open up a, a nice blank uh, Colab notebook. And we can just have a quick look at how to uh, add some add some things here as we would in a Jupyter notebook. So first, let's um, let's see how we can add text. We can add a text cell or a code cell using these buttons here. Let's add a text cell. Uh, and I'll just put this. Oh, this is some code in Colab. And I can hit control and enter. Oh, I can hit click. Sorry, I need to click off of that cell. Up here, for example, and we'll see that the, the cell, the code, the text becomes formatted. Um, I thought you might be able to drag this around, but you can't. If you want to move this up to the top, you can use the arrow over here. So move it up to the top and we can move it down again over there. So let's put some, let's do some code now. We start always with a, there's always a code cell existing in the Colab notebook. Um, let's create a variable called um, two, uh, sorry, X and give it a value of two. And we can hit here, we can click or we can type control and enter to run the cell. The first time we run a cell, it seems to take a little bit of time. And that's because we're connecting and initializing the virtual machine that Colab is working on. Um, let's add, let's make another variable in a different code cell. Uh, let's do y equals three. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna, on my keyboard, hit control and enter, and that's gonna run it. Notice that was much faster because we're, uh, we've initialized the virtual machine now. Finally, let's add a third uh, cell and put two lines of code in here. We'll do Z equals X plus Y. If I enter, I can go down to the next line and then let's print Z, put that in some brackets. If I click here, we should get our output of five. Yes, great. Okay, so that's some, some basic functionality of working in a Colab notebook. Uh, let's save this. Um, you, you see, when you create a new Colab notebook, it will have just a, a boring name. I'm just going to put this in here and call it testing. I hit enter there. And now I need to. I do need to remember to save this. Let's click save, and just check that all changes are saved. If we go back to our Google Drive um, tab now, we'll see that testing.ipymb is here. Now this IPYNB is the notebook file format, uh, and that's a common format between Colab and Jupyter. So I'm going to close my testing Colab notebook. I'm going to show you, that, demonstrate how this is, uh, we could bring this into Jupyter. So let's right click on testing.ipymb, and let's download that file. Now I know that I'm, uh, and I'm going to be told, asked in Windows, I'm working on a Windows 10 machine, uh, if I want to save that file or open it, I'm going to save it. And I know that in my browser in Firefox, that will have been downloaded to my downloads folder. And here we can see is the uh, is the file. Great. So I've got the, the IPYNB notebook file on my computer now. So I can work locally with Jupyter, which I already have running here. And I've navigated to my downloads folder. And you can see here is the testing uh, notebook that I've just created on Colab. Let's click on that. It should open and we should be able to see here it is. This is exactly what we just made uh, in a Colab notebook in the cloud. But now I'm running this notebook on my local machine. And let's prove that we can then edit this and move it back to, Co uh, back to Colab. Um, so let's, uh, we're in Jupyter, so we need to insert. So let's click on this cell, insert a cell below. Let's put some text so that we know uh, this, this is code in Jupyter. So I'm going to run that uh, and Jupyter creates me a new cell immediately. I'm going to 
create a variable called name. I'm going to give that a string that contains the word James. I'm going to run that. And now I'm going to print hello space plus name. What do you think the output's going to be? Let's run this. Hello, James. Hello, and then our variable name, which contains uh, the, the string James. Great. Let's save this. We can see here in Jupyter it's selling us as unsaved changes. So we just go file, save, and checkpoint. And now we can close this. We could either cl just close the tab, or we can go file, close, and halt. And that brings us back to um, uh, the home page of Jupyter. So that's updated our testing IPYMB file. Let's just drag and drop that back up into our Google Drive. Now, note we've already got a file here with the same name. We've updated it somewhere else, and we're going to copy it back in to Google Drive. Let's see what happens. I'm going to drag it in there. It's starting the upload. Now, what it's done is it's it's kind of merged the existing file. Let's say it's overwritten the existing file. Um, if you don't want to overwrite the existing file, you can click keep as a separate file. So what that now will do is this is our old testing IPYMB. And we could open this uh, with Colab. So I just right click there, open. And this will only have the code from Colab. Or I hope it does anyway. Yes, we can see that. Because when we uploaded it, we gave a new new name, testing, brackets one. If I double click on this, uh, Google won't know what to do. Uh, Firefox won't know what to do. So let's click open with collaboratory. So that's two different ways of opening, opening notebooks. Either right click, open with Colab, or double click. And here, this is the file that you know, we've edited, and we've got our Jupyter code in it. So when you um, are up, uploading files into Google Drive that have the same name as something that's existing, you need to decide, do you want to overwrite the file, which is the default um, setting, or do you want to create a separate file? And then you would click on this um, here. Great. Uh, the last thing I want to show in this video is... Um, some of the uh, the ways that Colab notebooks treat existing IPYMB files. So here's a CodeCamp notebook that I've um, uploaded previously. Uh, I'm going to open that with Google Colabatory, and you should recognize this this notebook once it opens. Here it is. Um, the, this is our, our CodeCamp notebook. And what I want to show here is that um, Colab notebooks have these arrows on the left here. And that allows us to um, collapse and open sections of the notebook. So here with the down arrow, that means that all the subsections of the, of the notebook are open here. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see here for the exponent section, the arrow is pointing across. Colab has actually hidden 18 cells. So I just want to highlight this, that you might need to check expand to expand all those cells. Look, there was stuff inside here. There are cells that were hid that um, Colab had hidden from us. So we can run that. And again, it's hidden what's going on in the roots. It's, it's hidden one cell. So do be aware. And look, when you're working in Colab on the side here at these arrows, because they will... They, Google may have hidden some of the code for us. Okay, hopefully you found that useful to see some of the basic functionality of Colab Notebooks and how we can work back and forth between uh, Colab Notebooks and in Jupyter.